You look at FAMU, Charlie, they got 25 plus FBS transfers to come in, but you also have to consider they lost some key pieces. Like they lost some serious three year starters. So Coach Colsey, you know, talked about it here at Media Days. Like, I've got to get some guys in that can play right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but the thing is, you never know. Like, are these guys going to fit? Uh, you know, you hear coaches talk about, look, I have guys that came from power four schools that might be second team. So it's not a guarantee uh, that you're going to be a starter because you have the pedigree of where you came from. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these coaches at the FCS level, they're good players, are going up to the power four. Sure they are. <laughs> so yeah. it's like a seesaw yeah. back and sure forth. Sure it is. When you look at, we talked about uh, Florida and m any other schools that stand out in the, in the SWAC that you felt did a good job in the transfer portal? Well, I think the biggest transfer happened in-house, and that was for Alabama State because they pick up Andrew Boddy, the quarterback from Texas Southern. He switches divisions. He comes over to Alabama State, right. and lo and behold, guess who's picked to win the SWAC East? So when you have the quarterback in place, there's a lot of expectations. He's a true dual-threat quarterback. Uh, he didn't play last year because of injury, sure. but the prior season threw for, I think it was 1,799, we're going to call it 1,800 yards, <laughs> yeah. uh, averaging about 50 yards rushing per game. So he's a true dual-threat quarterback, and there's a lot of expectations now in Montgomery. How many new coaches in the conference this year? Four or five? Four of the six the, coaches yeah. in the SWAC West. This right. is their first year. First year. So that's interesting. And one of them is Grambling. How do you look at what Grambling has done? We talked about Miles Crawley and Coach Mickey Joseph and what he's been able to bring to the table. Well, Mickey Joseph is known for his offensive mind. This is a guy that coached Joe Burrow. He's mm -hmm. done pretty good. And he's really done a good job of developing wide receivers um, throughout his career. So we talked to him at Media Day, and Coach Joseph said, look, I told Miles Crawley, no, nothing is given. You're going to have to earn that number one spot. And when you come to practice every day, I'm going to criticize you first. Right. And he's been able to handle that criticism. He's the preseason player of the year. Did a really good job when he was at Alabama State. Uh, was in a bit of a battle at Grambling last year, but now it seems like he's ready to take the reins there for the G-men. And I think he has a really good coach in Mickey Joseph to take him to that next level. A lot of people, they're predicting him to play at the next level. Oh, big kid. Yes. Uh, big arm. We saw the things he could do at Alabama State. I think getting in a position where he's going to earn the spot and be the guy, um, and a lot of eyes on him as a preseason uh, offensive player of the year, he'll have the opportunity to showcase He's just got to do his part. He has the platform. So we've talked about Alabama State. We've talked about Florida a &M. We've talked a little bit about uh, Grambling. Any other school that stands out in your mind when we talk about the transfer portal? You know, the, the thing is, not only the players, but the coaches. You look around at some of the assistant coaches in the SWAC, there's a lot of head coaches mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that are now position coaches. Uh, so I look at Southern University. I'm pretty excited uh, about what they have in Terrence Graves, sure. the new coach. Fred McNair is the tight end. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine just going down to your tight ends coach mm -hmm. and is Fred McNair sitting down there and <laughs> Willie Totten is there? <laughs> that is a championship pedigree just from the coaching mm -hmm. uh, standpoint. So I'm really excited about what Southern uh, might be able to do. But the transfer portal, it is so hard to predict because sure. it looks great when you have, hey, this kid was a four star. Sure. He was a three star. He came from Syracuse. Mm -hmm. He came from Michigan. But does he fit in mm -hmm. and can he play in the SWAC? It's exciting to get those clicks early on when you're talking about it, but they got to prove it on the field. We've been talking about the SWAC. How about some of the other conferences? Does any name stand out in your mind in terms of transfer at any of the other three HBCU conferences? Well, the MEAC, um, I think it's going to be pretty exciting to see what South Carolina State does because Chinnis Berry comes over from Benedict. Sure. Had a dominant program there. Again, I tell you, the transfer portal is as much about coaches as it is about players. So you have North Carolina Central. They kind of want to get back to where they were. Uh, hit a little bump in the road. Howard, we haven't even talked about Howard. They were right there last year. Um, so I think it is so competitive in the MEAC because there's so only few six, schools. Only six schools, I mean, right. look, yeah. one, one bump on a Saturday and you could be knocked out of that thing. But it will be interesting to see uh, what Chinnis Berry does at South Carolina State in the MEAC. And Division II wise, SIAC is going to have plenty of opportunities. Uh, they have some SWAC matchups. You look at teams sure. like Tuskegee and Miles. It might be early on in the season. Clark Atlanta's in Clark there. Clark Atlanta. Too. Yep. They're going to take on Bethune Cookman. I've been at Games Charlie. Is not, I'm old enough to remember the SIAC knocking off some SWAC schools. Sure. That will be a big feather in the cap of that conference if they can get some wins this year.
How about the CIAA? Of course, Virginia Union's defending champion. They beat Virginia State in what you would call the playoff game that got them into the championship yeah. game against Fayetteville State. Yeah. And and Fayetteville State is always a team you have to watch out for. And the CIAA took away their north-south division. It's the top two teams that are going to go to the championship this year. Yeah, and that's going to change a lot of things because, like you said last year, you know, Virginia State and Virginia Union, it, it could have come down to those two teams had there not been – um, the two divisions. I think Fayetteville State will have another consistent um, effort. Uh, they've been the team to beat. Now, Charlie, you 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 may or may not know. I'm a graduate of Winston-Salem State. We used to be the team to beat, but it's been hard times lately for the Rams uh, because our rival, Fayetteville State, has just taken over what was the South. I look for them to have another consistent year. But the ability of Virginia Union to run the football the way that they do, mm -hmm. if no one can stop that, I look for them to be back on top.